Well, hi there, my stitchy friends. We are back. Well, I'm back, actually. I'm at the shop. We're in progress of setting up. I'm waiting for the Spectrum guy to come. Spectrum is the local internet provider. So I'm at the back of the shop, like if I just walked in the back door, and this is the mess you see right here. So I'm just going to go around this. Uh, I'm going to explain a little bit about how the shop's going to get set up. This is the storage, like right here is going to be, you know, mailing supplies, shipping boxes, that kind of thing. Um, this area in here is going to be fabrics. And I'll have my cutting table here. It's here somewhere, but buried. We just brought it over a couple days ago. This is going to be the checkout area right across from the fabric. So this will be checkout area and we'll have <clears throat> these uh, wire racks. They're, they're not racks, they're like grids. They're gonna go up on the wall right here. I'm gonna have to put them, they, they're almost, this is a seven foot long uh, grid. So it's, the wall is almost seven foot and that's gonna hang there and I'll have my stuff that you know little things that can get easily lost or misplaced um <clears throat> excuse me we'll go hanging up here buttons the little button packs so that i'll have easy access to them uh, just have to do a little more clean out over there that's my register stand oh and if i come back here you'll see my filing cabinet i haven't decided where that's going to go but my you know computer equipment stuff We'll go in here. That's still set up in my house right now so that we're continuing to ship out. That is a display case. That's how it got wrapped up when we moved, covering the glass um, and then shrink wrapped. There's another display case. I haven't decided where that's going to go. It's all just kind of like a work in progress. You put something in one place and if it doesn't work, you move it and you try someplace else. So that's the end of the slat wall. That's why I'm starting the fabric um, area right at the end of the slat wall because I don't need that area. I need height to get my tubs of fabric up. And this is just a bookcase, an Ikea bookcase um, that we had in the shop. And I turned it on its side. My husband's going to see if he can't um, make it so we can put a shelf in here so I can have two totes. Otherwise, I can stack up fabric or this is like for my yardage my long pieces of fabric that I still keep in like the 27 inch length and then maybe I could put like a tote at the end or something and then of course I could put more up there if this doesn't work I'm going to get one of those cubey things you know where you get the separate little cube areas and you can put the different totes this back here will probably be you know ch miscellaneous smaller charts and stuff We'll hang there. Still have some ceiling tiles I gotta put away. Another filing cabinet for model charts and that kind of thing. My paperwork, that kind of stuff. Spinner rack we're getting ready. Nancy worked really hard all last week. Um, actually, we kind of both did when we got back from celebration. Taking a, a thorough inventory of all the threads, getting them up on the wall. We have our DMC spinner here finally. Oh my gosh, that was horrible not being able to access that spinner for so long. Oh, there's the cutting table down in this area. So that will get unshrink wrapped and it will sit kind of at the end of that fabric area, like where that ladder is there. <clears throat> I'll be able to roll it in and out. The store area is smaller. Well, it's about the same size if those of you that are familiar with my shop in Illinois, the L, you know, we had the square in the middle or the rectangle in the middle. That was the old flower shop. It's about comparable <clears throat> to that, maybe a little bit longer than that shop with the full width going the full width rather than um, there was that little area where you kind of went behind the fabric and there was the bathroom back there and a, like a little storage area. So this is the actual full width of it. <clears throat> a little bit bigger than what was in the flower shop. So 
And the plus we have that extra area back there where the door is. So that's, like I said, our shipping and storage area. So there you see the checkout area in the back. Um, getting the spinner set up. This is going to be our needles and little accessories, scissors, that kind of thing. Q-snaps, uh, flossaways, thread drops, that kind of thing like that. Um, trunk show stuff, like I said, we just got back from Celebration. A lot of this is still just boxes that just got dropped here and not literally dropped, but dropped off here. Here's my, whoo, sorry, I'm losing my camera. Our silks going to be unwrapped. Those are going to hang up on the wall somewhere. Just different little things that need to get unpacked and put away. Nancy's been setting up the spinner racks. We'll probably have six to eight spinners in here. Um, this is from the Rosewood Manor trunk show. We have a lot of these. Mo these are the model charts that we had. So um, after that's all unpacked and hanging in this space, I have lots of wall space. I'm so excited about that. Lots of wall space to hang models. Look at how beautiful all, all the models we can hang. Not back there because back there under the flag is going to be the racks. And then I have all that wa uh, rack space. And those wire grids, I think I'm going to put along this wall here too. Like those of you familiar again with the Illinois store, how we had that back sampler wall. That's what I want. I envision over here. But like I said, I have to get it set up and see how it's all going to work. So there's spinners. Um, my husband has to work on that thermostat, put a new one in. There was that false wall. This is where it kind of resided in this area. You can see up on the ceiling. I don't know if you can make out those little whoops tracks here. It's hard to focus with my finger in the way. But anyway, that's where the wall was. And so we're, we closed that up, got rid of the wall, closed up the ceiling, and... Now we have to put a new thermostat in. It's It works okay, but it's not optimal. And then here, um, like I showed you, this was the classic. Here's the weeks. It seems a little dark in this area right over the weeks. This may or may not be stay this way if I don't like it. Because it seems okay down this area. It's just these top few rows seem a little dark. But we'll see. Maybe I'll put um, some hang some kind of light up there fixture. This DMC will not stay here. We're going to move it, but for now it's here. Um, and then, of course, the general art. And right here, actually kind of right in this area, we're going to put this uh, DMC rack. Because in front, we're going to do, these are my, you can't see, well, you can see one of them. That my anchor, there's four of them like this. So that's too high. We're going to go four high, and that's going to sit right here in front of the window because I never open that um, shade. You can't see in there's uh, reflective, you know, anti-glare type reflective uh, stuff on the window. So you can't really see in. So the curtain just is there. It's, I guess it, I could take it off, but for it's there. So just leave it there for now. We'll see how it goes. It doesn't really add extra light to open it. So and then more model space. Um, in this corner, I had that glass shelf like for where I put new products or products I wanted to feature. I'm going to hang a curtain across. This is a door. Um, there's a yoga place next door. And they used to own, not own, they used to rent both units. Their unit and then, of course, the unit I'm in. And so they had the door to go between. But I'm going to because you can hear a little bit through that door opening. So I'm going to hang um, a drapery rod and then put some drapes. And then I'm going to put my glass shelves right here. So hopefully you won't even see that door anymore. You won't even notice it. You'll just see this curtain back there. And I might even put a couple curtain rods so that it looks like it's maybe covering a window or something. I'm not sure. Try to make it look appealing. And then, you know, the rest of the junk that has to get put away. The spinners, you know, we used to put like the sled patterns on there or the little house needlework patterns or classic color works. We kind of have changed it up throughout the years. 
and that's it. Um, we're making progress. We had a little, you know, a few setbacks. And then, of course, we went to uh, Celebration of Needlework. Actually, that's my sign. My sister didn't know that I just leave it there and because it's just, you know, printed piece of paper. But <laughs> that was so funny when we got there and I saw that hanging there. And I'm like, oh, that seems so weird, Palm Coast, Florida. It's just, you know, I pinch myself sometimes. I'm like, I can't believe I'm here. We talked about coming here for so long, so many years, so many years, and I just thought I would, you know, like, it's still a way in the future, but it's actually here, guys. I'm actually living here, and I, I still feel like I'm going to be going home. I, I haven't quite settled into this is my home yet, even though my house finally sold, not finally, I mean, it sold pretty fast, but uh, sold in Illinois. It was on the market maybe about 10 days. And then we got a contract right away. The um, I just saw Nancy turn the corner. Um, cash offer, so we were thrilled. Took it and didn't look back. The closing was a couple weeks ago. Yeah, mid mid May. And so we're all set. We're looking for property here in Florida. The condo we're in, you know, was just a investment and we you know we're renting it out and now we're living in it temporarily until we can find a place to live so this is our update hopefully i will hook up with nancy she's I, like i said i just saw her pull in so she should be here momentarily and then we're going to get busy working in here getting we have a few more packages um to ship out and once the internet's hooked up i'm going to bring the computer over here and we can finally do everything from just one place not from two different places okay so we will talk to you soon before i send back the jan hicks trunk show that we had at celebration of needlework i thought i would give you a little tour let me just try to arrange myself here kind of stuck between a couple different fixtures in the shop Okay, this is a sampler. I'm going to try to back up so you can see the whole thing. This is Louise Chapuis, 1844. Very beautiful sampler. Love the flowers. And look at that border. It's just this right here is just, it's so festive. There's some flowers. If I was a flower aficionado, I'm sure I could tell you what they were. That one definitely looks like a rose. I couldn't even begin to guess what the others are. But anyway, Louise Chapuis. Very nice. And then Jan did um, a series of little Christmas alphabet ornaments. And this one is, um, they're all called Vintage Christmas Alphabet, but this is uh, number one. It's the letters A through C, Angel, Bell, and Candle. And then moving on to number two, she has Deer and Elf. And when I say alphabet number one, that's one pattern. Uh, number two contains these two designs, and that's another pattern. Alphabet number three is F and G, Family and Gift. Four is right over here. These two, sorry. H and I, Holly and Invite. And her most recent, number five, is Joy, Kids, and Lights. I'll come in a little closer so you can see those. Very pretty. Um, then she did a series of like balloon designs and she had them framed, but the frames were too heavy for this board that I have. Um, and I had this hanging as celebration. I didn't want anything to happen. So she has them, um, they're pinned down now, so I can't remove it, but she has, um, a little magnetic or a washer really glued to the back of them and then a washer in the frame. So she can flip these in and out as she'd like. She had these actually just um, put in their own separate frames, but I took them out just for ease of uh, display. So this one's called Autumn. Carolyn's Balloons, Autumn. 
Here's Carolyn's Balloons Winter, and she has each uh, done, trimmed out differently, like this one has both pom-pom and chenille. And this one is Carolyn's Balloons Spring. So there's still one more to come out, which is Summer. I imagine that'll be coming soon. This one, uh, Nancy ended up, uh, the pattern went home with her. This is called Meditation. And doesn't it look like so tranquil, you want to just sit and enjoy the garden and maybe grab a little chair, sit up under the tree. How beautiful is that, huh? And this is Palace of the Winds. Monochromatic. Um, I have to check on the, it looks like an overdyed floss that she used for it. I, I'm sorry, I don't have that information right in front of me, but I'm sure you could use any overdyed floss. Beautiful. Could possibly be silk. Yeah, it looks like it. All the variation. It's gorgeous. Okay, and coming around. I don't want to. Okay, sorry. I don't want to make you dizzy. These are cottages. The first two that she has in the series. This is called Winter Cottages. And she just has it... Um, laced and mounted on this little board. It has an easel back, so if you wanted, you could, I'm setting it up, so you could just stand it up like that. There's just a little easel on the back. And she has it decorated. There's a little clip here, and she has it decorated with some, um, looks like some kind of big weave ribbon, maybe like a floral decorator, um, and then some rickrack. And this one is called Spring Cottages. And she has um, a piece of fabric backing, looks like on, this must have been a pre-purchased frame of some sort. And then she just covered that with fabric and then mounted her design right there. Decorated it with a little flower and a little bird button. Very cute. Try not to trip over all my stuff here. This is one of her latest releases, um, right in time for Mother's Day. Of course, Mother's Day pa is past, but you can get started on it right now for next year. Mom, so much love in one little word. That would be very appropriate for your mother. Uh, Jan also did a seasonal uh, series called Samplings of Lace, and each season is different. This is the summer one with all these gorgeous purples. So each set has like the little pillow with the tassels, has a strawberry, and I like how she did the different, each strawberry has different um, toppings, toppings, leaves, caps, and they're all the same designs. Yes, it's, well, almost exactly the same, but very, very similar, but each one has, like I said, the pillow with the tassels and the strawberry, and then the little pillow with the ruched edges. Okay, this one's winter, samplings of lace winter with the gorgeous teals. And there's the strawberry. This one has a little button closure on the top. Okay, here is autumn. Your browns and golds, perfect for fall. Here's your tassel pillow, and of course, your strawberry. Here are samplings of lace spring. There's your pillow. This one, she didn't use um, ruched ribbon, she just made a cording with the colors in the design. There's her strawberry. This one has got like a little. Um, uh, I forgot what they call those in quilting, those little pinwheel thingies with a button on it. And the pillow with yo-yos. I believe that's what it's called, a yo-yo. And then the pillow with the tassels. She also had another release, I believe it was either at market or right before. It's called Peaceful Christmas Smalls. And that's beautiful. It's very wintry, the, the blue color. And I love this linen color. I'm not sure exactly what 
fabric it is, but that's Mary, and then we leave. And she finished them slightly different. There you have the one size, or she added, made it a little bit larger by adding this little piece of fabric at the bottom. And this one was the hit at Celebration. I sold out of this one, totally sold out. I probably could have, I don't know, if I had another 10 of them, I probably could have sold those too. It was by far the big hit. So you see all this stripes in the flag, all these different uh, sampler designs. Each stripe is a different stitch. Well, not a different stitch, a different uh, pattern. And then, of course, your union, the blue union with the white stars, and then a Pluribus Unum. Really, really pretty. So that's it for, I think I remembered everything, for Jan. Um, I'm glad I took this opportunity to film this for you. We still have all these patterns in stock. If you are interested in any of them, just shoot us an email or they're all listed on the website. Go ahead and place an order. And um, I'm trying to convince Jan. Well, I'm not trying to convince her. I think she's convinced, but I we're trying to she's trying to work out details so that she can come to Galleria as uh, a vendor. So wouldn't that be exciting? Have a new face, a new designer. I love when new people come because everyone is so excited. You know, I mean, we love our old favorites. Not that they're old, but we love our favorites. And, you know, we go to their rooms time and time again. But new faces are always welcome. Look at how cute these little houses are. This is on the balloons. It's like all the hot air balloons. And I don't know what made her uh, design this. Because she's, I believe, from Idaho. So I would, unless they have hot air balloons there. But I know New Mexico is known for their big balloon festivals. I love this one. It's so pretty. This is fairly new, too. I think this might have been released at market. Sorry, I'm holding the camera kind of crazy. And then what a collection. This is only, you know, A through L. So you're only halfway done with the alphabet. Aren't they pretty? Okay, I will probably film the Rosewood Manor patterns next. As soon as I get them, I want to get those arranged in the shop. So hold tight for that. It might be this video, it might be next video. We'll see um, time-wise how it all works out. Okay, thanks for watching.